I know that every one of you uh, council delegates know it's, uh, it's a privilege and an honor to sit where you sit and for you to speak on behalf of your people and the constituents, not just your areas, but the whole nation. <clears throat> And uh, so again, thank you. Aron lede dino tsangi ni so kaigi ihe ko hit ila ba huint ido hat ila ba hata itzisa da no sin ko shin ko ko etla natle to ket kaba ka ko ba ke ille. Always good to see Miss Navajo. Uh, thank you for representing our people and in a very dignified way. And so thank you. Aron na to ko et ni so kaigi ihe ki de shin ole. Aron we just also swore in our new commissioners, the very first uh, in the nation, of any nation, uh, the commissioners, veterans, commissioners, all your commissioners got swear, sworn in today. Thank you for your job that you ensued. So we have both uh, women and men uh, commissioners. It's a very significant day. Uh, for you all to assume your role and function as commissioners for the Veterans Office. So, so again, thank you, Honorable Lorenzo Bates and members of the 23rd Council and guests that are in the gallery. Always thank you. This is the uh, fourth time Vice President Jonathan Nez and I have come before the 23rd Navajo Nation Council to report on the state of the nation. Of course, so we're honored to join you on the opening day of the 2016 Navajo Nation Council Spring Session, Aronda. And we know that the election in the nation is going on. Uh, we were able to meet with uh, both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and discuss issues that really relate to us as Navajo Nation in terms, first, of their obligation to uphold the treaty uh, of our nation and also the trust responsibility that they had and to recognize and to recognize the sovereignty of our nation and also to be aware of the need to develop our economy to create jobs uh, to work with veterans and all of those critical issues that face our our nations in terms of also water rights and so we challenge the, both candidates to be mindful of that and at the same time asking both candidates to consider if elected into the office to establish a, uh, a cabinet level a Native American uh, secretary that will be able to uh, go across all federal agencies and make sure that those agencies bring the resources to the table when it comes to working with Native Americans. I call uh, and internally, we're working to improve the infrastructure across the nation to benefit both residential condition and to support economic development. So this February, I signed a water projects investment legislation, which is the most comprehensive and wastewater legislation in the history of our nation. And the intent of the legislation is to, is to provide sufficient water and job opportunities to all Navajo communities. And this particular legislation leveraged uh, financing through loans to fund the project. By doing this, the Navajo Nation will be able to retain more money for future investment and project. This, in turn, contributes to creating a greater Navajo Nation. By and then we wait for another ten more dollars. Kadeya, we receive this money and we're leveraging it so that the principle can remain in place for a future generation to use in building their economy and meeting the needs that they, have, that they will have for our future generation and the those that are yet unborn. In talking about building infrastructure, strengthening, strengthening economic development, educating our youth and the workforce and assisting our veterans, we're talking about building a better Navajo nation. So we, real, we realize the interdependence of each area affecting the next one and we have to stay comprehensive in our view towards making progress. So as we move forward from here to the 23rd Council Summer Session, we move forward honoring the foundations of Keh and Hojo. Uh, we adhere to the teachings set forth from time immemorial to guide us toward a better future and a new dawn of growth and opportunity for the Navajo people. Hotego uh, eya is our opening statement. Thank you and uh, good good afternoon, um, delegates and everyone here in the council chambers. It's good to be here amongst uh, great leadership as well as uh, 
those that are listening on the World Wide uh, Web, we, we uh, thank you and we appreciate uh, each and every one of you. As you all know, we brought in many highly educated young people, uh, many highly educated professionals throughout the nation, um, the Navajo Nation as well as the United States, to help uh, in building a better tomorrow for our Navajo people in regards to appointments to division directors. Uh, we are almost fully uh, staffed in the divisions for the Navajo Nation, the executive branch. But we do have a few division directors for your consideration this uh, council session. Uh, we have uh, appointed Ms. Crystal Deschini to lead the Division of Economic Development. Um, she has over 20 years of expertise in finance, investment, analysis, and management. She will be the first woman to hold this position. Deschini has a solid background in finance and investment management and has managed capital infrastructure project development for various tribal governments. She has also managed large construction projects with her experience and background. We have full confidence she will create jobs, develop infrastructure, and help diversify our economy. She holds an MBA and an MA in American Indian Studies, Tribal Policy and Law from the University of Arizona in Tucson. She also has a BS in uh, Business Administration and Finance from San Diego State University. She worked uh, seven years as a Financial Investment Manager for the Forest, Forest County Potawatomi Tribe and a 1,500 a member tribe located in northern Wisconsin. So we want to say thank you for Crystal for uh, saying yes to the Begay administration to help serve uh, our people. So I think she's here and can you stand? This is Crystal Deschitney. Give her a round of applause. We also have appointed Miss. Teresa Hopkins as Director of Telecommunication and Regulatory Commission. Teresa, can you please stand? Is she here? Oh, there she is. Teresa. She has a combined experience of over 25 years in the field of information technology, telecommunication, and system analysis. Ms. Hopkins has an extensive work history that includes her work as a Division Director of the Navajo Nation Division of General, General Services, CEO for Dinet Digital Service, Services and CEO for Dinette Technologies Corporation. In her position as Division Director for General Services, Hopkins uh, coordinated a grant from the Gates Foundation in the amount of $2 million for computer systems to be housed at each of the 110 Navajo communities. Also, we have appointed Carl Smith. Carl Smith, can you stand? Everybody knows Carl. Is he around? Oh, he's over here in the back. Carl Smith. Smith comes to the nation with over 20 years experience in the field of community development, housing, social services, and law enforcement. Previous to this administration, Smith was acting executive director of the Division of Community Development where he oversaw the day-to-day -day operation of the division while working directly with uh, the executive branch. Smith has also previously, previously served as an executive staff assistant with the office of the president and vice president where he worked as the lead housing liaison while also working with DCD in areas regarding infrastructure and development and also with the Navajo Hopi Land Commission addressing location, relocation and housing needs on the nation. Uh, Carl Smith has a Bachelor's of Science and a Master's degree in Social Work, both from Western New Mexico University. The next we have also appointed Levon Sosi. Levon, are you here? Can you stand please? What was that? Oh, she's on this side. Levon. Give her a round of applause. She's going to be the uh, Executive Director for Human Resources. Sosi has extensive work history with the Navajo Nation, the New Mexico State Senate, and the Navajo Nation Department of Justice. She has served as the Committee Secretary for the Senate Indian and Cultural Affairs Committee for the New Mexico State Senate. Her duties include tracking legislative bills relevant to the committee. She also advised Senator John Pinto on the tracking of certain legislation in the House. Uh, or Senate in the Tribal Legislature. She has a Bachelor's of Science in Political Science from NAU, Go Lumberjacks, and is a member of the Navajo Nation Bar Association. So uh, these are individuals we have uh, bestowed a, a real large responsibility on leading some of our 
the visions for the Navajo Nation. So we wish them well, and also we ask that this council uh, un unanimously support their confirmation this week. Thank you. Oh, Hela Shinale. Ado, the Navajo Nation, we were the first tribal nation in this country to establish a Veterans Act. It's never been done before in any nation. We, as a nation, talked about it, debated it. It's been, uh, it's been talked about out there for many, many years. And finally, uh, on February 13th, we signed into law the Navajo Veterans Act. And this morning, uh, the commissioners that you just met a while ago, uh, we swore them in as the new commissioners for uh, the, the Veterans Act and their responsibility, as I expressed to them this morning, uh, first of all, is to pursue housing. That's a huge need for our veterans. Secondly, is for them to receive adequate quality health care. For our veterans. On this nation, we should never ever use the word and or, or say the statement, a homeless veteran. We're going to eradicate that by these commissioners and the office working together by making sure that every veteran out there has a place to sleep uh, in an apartment, in a house where they will be safe. And so this is one of the those goals that we have for the commissioners is find houses for our veterans. Secondly, is that when they get sick to make sure that they get good quality health care. And then thirdly is to pursue Navajo Nation being designated as a regional uh, service center. That is, uh, that's how states are, res are designated. That's how the Philippines uh, is designated. Uh, Mexico City is designated as such. Puerto Rico. Uh, they're designated as Regional Service Center for the U.S. Um, uh, VA Administration for Navajo Nation to be designated as such so that we can pursue all the benefits that come to the states now in Arizona, New Mexico, Utah will come directly to Navajo Nation. As a result, we'll be able to establish a VA hospital here on the nation. And these are some of the responsibilities will be carried forth by our commissioners uh, also with the VA uh, office that we have. And also, we know that uh, through the three branch chief meeting that we've had, uh, and serving as also as a delegate sitting here in, uh, in the chambers for the last four years, Malani Manali, uh, for more than eight years, we know that there are a lot of duplication of services within the executive branch. And so we are going through it each division and we're, we are restructuring the division so that they're streamlined, that direct services uh, are being uh, being done more effectively, uh, that our each division is working hard and effectively to, to meet the needs of the people uh, in the areas that they are responsible for. So uh, we are going through, we establish a restructured task force and the task force has been meeting with each of the division to carry out uh, the restructuring of the executive branch. So we are involved in a massive restructuring and to eliminate all of those um, all, all of those services that we don't need. We're merging uh, uh, programs. We're also looking at all division and to see maybe the creation of new division, eliminating some. And so we want to position this nation uh, to be an effective uh, nation in serving our people out there. Adondenda. Uh, and we know that as we have really made a commitment with Manali and I to serve the former Bennett Freeze area, the people that were displaced, and Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, wanted to say also that there has been uh, some movement in regarding to in regards to getting electrification to Tunahali as you uh, might have noticed in the press release there has been uh, some development happening in the former Bennett Freeze area with Tunahali chapter getting electrification that's a uh, ICDBG project for some of those chapters including the uh, previous chapter that I used to represent, Inscription House and Shanto, 
Ajib be belanda sitlan with uh, with the help of president we got some infrastructure out there you know in regards to more uh, work to be done in the Bennett Freeze area we're looking at developing more gravel pits uh, not just in Bennett Freeze but throughout the Navajo Nation Ada a lot of the clearances and requirements that are being done by Navajo the, the Division of Transportation has been moving forward so we want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Garrett Silversmith for, for helping us with uh, doing those preliminary works. The, one of the other things I wanted to mention, we signed a proclamation, proclamation last Thursday declaring April 2016 a Navajo Nation Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month. Sexual violence is a major public health crisis and social justice and human rights issue. It's one that impacts the Navajo Nation. The U.S. Department of Justice has been estimated that 100 women on the Navajo Nation are assaulted every month which averages to over three assaults a day. The nation needs to implement necessary change, including additional funding to support data reporting, laboratory testing, and mental health services for survivors. Reliable data is needed to determine prevalence and incidence uh, rates for accurate trends of sexual violence on the Navajo Nation in comparison with other population. Our administration asks that all branches of government, as well as all tribal departments, work to, together to eradicate sexual assault on the Navajo Nation. And so we want, we would like to provide you all with some teal ribbons that the staff will hand out to show your support for victims of sexual assault and implement prevention measures throughout the Navajo Nation. Thank you very much, President. Okay, la ado opa hono sinigi eya economic summit. The very first um, of its kind was done by the Navajo Nation Division of Economic Development, our office and other uh, people that are really involved in seeing growth take place in the respective nations like Southern Ute, like the Alaska Nana Corporation, Ho-Chunk, uh, incorporated out in uh, Nebraska. And we are working hard to lower the almost 50% unemployment by utilizing what we have already, by getting the uh, the enterprise, the corporation to work together with our divisions and also with all the other entities by bearing those their resources on uh, high growth areas like Shiprock, Chinle, Tuba City and then uh, sub, uh, uh, sub communities like Kayenta, Kanado, Pinyan and, and the rest and so by by banding together, combining our resources, and looking at each of these uh, towns is what do we do to combine our resources and build up those communities and by working together rather than separately. In our economic um, summit and also the Gold King Mine spill, uh, we are opening the irrigation gates for uh, along the San Juan River at Upper Fruitland and that area down in Sedakan, Shipra area, Gari Ahai, and then out towards Anath. So irrigation water will be flowing, and it is flowing today. Uh, they're, they're, they're washing it out they're, and to make sure that they're ready uh, when we open the gates for irrigation. And the Gold King Mine spill here is coming up in Phoenix uh, this coming Friday, the 22nd. Uh, where the Indian Select Committee, the Senate Indian Select Committee on Indian Affairs, uh, which sent our Chairman Barrasso leading that charge, will be again looking at where and how EPA has responded to the Gold Key Mine uh, spill that has contaminated our water sources there in the San, along the San Juan River. Shinale. Okay, in conclusion, uh, we just want to say that there are PSAs, public servant service announcements being aired on the radio in regards to the Zika virus, also the reemergence of the Hunter virus within our communities. If you have any questions, visit the uh, Department of Health uh, website. The PSAs are on there. We do have a, a lot of information in our State of the Nation address. We'll be uh, going down to KTN afterwards to give a little bit more update on the things that we didn't cover today. So thank you. Okay, Lahto, again, thank you for the work that you guys do as council delegates. You guys hold important position and for advocating for your constituents. So, okay, you can go and get the hello and let that sound so it's